Are you feeling stuck, lost, tired, or uninspired? We've all been there, including myself. I'm Coach Des, mindset motivator and lifestyle entrepreneur. I'm here to tell you that the best, unapologetic, and limitless version of yourself is yet to come. The Born Unbreakable podcast is here to inspire just that. With motivating guests from all different walks of life and around the world, their stories will empower you to unlock abundance and your unbreakable spirit. Do you need accountability? Reach out to me for a free consultation of how I can support you in reaching your maximum potential. This episode is brought to you by Sherpa Way Marketing. Are you a business looking to gain greater visibility online through search engine optimized content? Maybe you need effective ad campaigns to kickstart or bolster traffic to your website. Sherpa Way Marketing has seasoned experts that are bilingual in English and Spanish. Let them take the guesswork away and enhance your brand positioning with their comprehensive marketing services. Go to SherpaWayMarketing.com. That's S-H-E-R-P-A-W-A-Y marketing.com to schedule your free 45-minute consultation today. Welcome to the Born Unbreakable podcast. I'm thrilled to have my guest today. It took a while for us to land on a date and time to meet, but I really think the content that we're going to cover is going to be so valuable to those of you listening because today we're going to talk about writing a book. And there's many of you who might be thinking about doing that, have always wanted to do that. This may be the time that This sparks the encouragement and the inspiration to do that because my guest, Vikrant or Vic Shayura, is an expert in this area. So if you if you or a friend um, are thinking of writing a book, then this is the episode that you want to definitely be paying attention to. So Vic is the founder and CEO of bestsellingbook.com. So that's your first source of a resource that you can go to find out even more information. Uh, He's internationally recognized to be a book launch expert, and he's the author of number one bestselling book, um, and which is how to write a bestseller. So that is a great resource for you to go out and get. And he's really passionate about helping entrepreneurs and coaches and consultants and professionals to be able to get their story out there in the world in a way that is successful. So Vic, thank you so much for coming on the Born Unbreakable podcast today. Thank you, Des, for having me here. I'm really excited for our conversation and I'm hoping that we can discuss about um, some actionable steps so that your audience can uh, take their first step in writing and publishing their book. Yes. Yes, there's, and that is the the key is people, hopefully they'll be able to take some good notes, you know, or replay some sections of this podcast to help them get started. But Vic, I'd love to, to just learn a bit more about your background. You know, have you always been passionate about writing? Tell me about your, your upbringing and what got you in this space. So English is not my first language and uh, I used to get the lowest grades in English subject uh, in my high school. And uh, I used to hate writing. I still hate writing. Uh, <laughs> that's why when I started my first, when, my start, when I started my company, the first employee I hired was a content writer because it was my biggest weakness. And um, when even when it comes to writing books, like I really, honestly speaking, I really don't enjoy uh, writing books or any sort of content because it's not my expertise. It's not my skill set. But the thing is, just because it's not my skill set or expertise, I have built a system for people like me, either who don't have the skill set or don't have the time so that they can turn or finally share or turn the ideas into a well written manuscript. Right. So I have a proper system of doing it. Um, now, come talking about my background, um, so I guess 12, 13 years ago, I used to be in engineering college. My family wanted me to become an engineer, um, and I had no, um, I had no path actually 
at that time that we, what exactly I'll be doing. But I used to hate lectures because it used to be extremely theoretical. I used to simply bunk them and go in uh, college libraries. And where I found a self-help section, I used to read a lot of books over there. And one fine day, I discovered this book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, it completely changed uh, my thought process about uh, life and finance. And after reading it, uh, the very same day, I decided to do something of my own. That, um, And the very same day, I just dropped out of the college. I was in the third um, semester, uh, one and a half years. There were still two and a half years left, and I just dropped out. Uh, so I dropped out, and um, so I started off my first business. I was, I guess, 18, 19 year old. Um, I borrowed some money from my seniors, my friends, relatives. Um, but the thing is, in six months, it it failed. The business failed. I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I the entire money which I had, it was all spent. Uh, I had no money left. I had to shut down the business. I had to fire all the employees. Um, but I learned a lot in the process. It it was I really I I find it. Um, I feel, feel that this was the the time when I learned a lot. Like there were two or three things which I still keep with me from that six months journey. Um, but now the thing is, the situation was uh, I had no money to pay my rent, my bill. Had my landlord used to call me every single day that hey, when are you gonna pay the rent? Um, so um, it was um, kind of a very dark um time for me but uh, that was the time when i discovered some of my strengths um that i had resilience in me and i had an option at that time as well to go back to college um my parents also wanted me to go back to the college but um then i discovered another book uh, by tony robbins uh, i think the book's title was awakens the giant within and it motivated me to keep going. It inspired me to keep going. Um, I, was, I started looking on internet um, that how can I make some money so that I can pay bills uh, and with zero investment, right? So I, I discovered self-publishing that I can write books, I can publish book um, and I can make some royalties income from there. Now, the challenge was I had um, horrible uh, skill set of writing. I had no, um, I, I had no interest at all in learning how to write. But the thing is, I had no excuses now. I simply wanted to uh, make some money. That was my primary motivation. So I logged myself. I had nothing to do at that time. So I logged myself in and in a room, and I started writing my first book. I completed that book in twenty one days. Right. And in 21 days, I was able to write it. And in the next three days, I was able to publish it and I started making some money from there. Right. So from in first month I made, I remember that I made around $27. Uh, and when I got to know that, I think it was 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. in the morning. When I saw this, I, I remember that I was jumping on my bed late night because this was the first income I made. Of course, it was it is not too big, but still. I could see the path that where exactly I could go. I wrote another book in three days, right? Um, it was a short book, but I this time I published it. I also marketed both of these books. And uh, this month, I guess, I made around $450 from both of these books. I was able to pay my rent, my bills. So then I didn't see backward. I um, started helping people right as well because some people started reaching out to me that hey how did you write your books can you please help me initially i helped people with for free then i added a coaching fees then some of the people they start telling me that hey we don't have the time and skill set please can you do the writing uh, i thought this is not my thing so i assembled a team of writers editors designers marketers and i created this done for you book publishing company Initially, the company's name was the Books Factory because we were producing books, but almost all the books which we were producing started becoming bestsellers. 
So we relaunched the company, we renamed the, renamed the company and made it bestsellingbook.com. So yeah, this is my journey, uh, exactly how I came into the book publishing space. That is unbelievable. So you're saying you didn't even like to write. There was urgency because you needed to make money. And then as a result of that urgency, you figured out a system and then monetized yeah. the system. Yes, right. I'm still I'm still on the that the fact that you wrote a book in your first two books in such a short period of time. <laughs> Every time I hear people, well, it took me a year to, you know, get my thoughts and then after that, you know, it's it's such a process. So that's incredible that it was so fast that you that you um like lightning speed did that. And um, Mm -hmm. And it is actually saying it is a, actually a great idea to write your book fast because uh, nowadays technologies, nowadays information changes very, very quickly. For an example, if you're writing about investing uh, and if you started writing this book maybe five years ago, then things have changed a lot in five years. So you have to be very fast. You have to really, you have to set a da target date that maybe just give yourself maximum three months that in three mm -hmm. months i'm going to knock this book off i'm just going to complete the book and i'm going to publish the book if most of the people why they're not able to write this uh, book fast or they take they take in maybe several years or sometimes entire lifetime to complete their book because they don't have a deadline they don't have someone on their head they're saying that hey you have to complete this book as fast as you can uh, until and unless they have any traditional publishing deal and they have some certain deadline, those people actually tend to finish the book fast because they have someone, some kind of an authority wanting them to write the book or complete the book fast. But if you are self-publishing the book, if you are, mm -hmm. if you have no one else to tell you that when to publish it, you have to give yourself deadline. Um, otherwise, technologies, informations can change very, very quickly. And maybe once you will be able to complete the manuscript, you have to again go back and update so many things because mm -hmm. there are so many things could change. So it's actually a sane idea to uh, complete your book as fast as you can. Yeah. So that's that's tip number one. So what else would you say if there's somebody listening right now? that says, I have a story, it's really powerful, I have information to give to the world, but I have no clue where to get started. What would you say? One more thing which I uh, see people making mistake is, uh, whenever they come with a book idea, um, of course, I have seen that most of the people, almost 99% people I've met in my life, they have a book in them. Uh, they have some sort of story, they have some sort of ideas or message or uh, some kind of a vision. Uh, and that can be a book. And people just procrastinate, right? They, they just don't take action. They think, they always ask themselves whether are they really having that thing to become an author? Are people really gonna pay uh, dollars to buy my book? Are people really, for example, even if people are going to buy the book, are they going to really like it? Or are they going to leave negative reviews on Amazon? Um, is it going to affect my brand? So, right? So there are so many uh, mental blocks we are talking about. So that's why, first of all, the, the first step is going to be you have to overcome those mental blocks. You need to understand that your story is unique, your message is unique. Even if, for example, you have, maybe you, the, the, the book topic you are gonna be working on, there could be thousands of books on the same topic, but still, your story is different. Your message is different. Your idea is different. Uh, the way you will be writing the story is gonna be different. And you need to understand that you have already covered or gone from point A to point B. And there are still thousands and thousands of people on point A wanting to go to point B. And they are looking for some sort of help, maybe some sort of inspiration, maybe 
and that inspiration could be your book. I have seen that in my life, um, books have has drastically changed my life, right? So the entire, like for example, I dropped out of the college because of book. Uh, when I had an option to go back to the college, uh, when I had no money left, still another book actually inspired me to keep on going. And there are countless books which actually is helping me in every uh, path of my journey. For example, how to have a great posture, how to communicate with people, how to be happy, how to have a great relationship, how to stay fit, how to exercise, how to um, do diet, like on every topic you can imagine at any, uh, any challenge you are facing right now, there is someone with a book, right? And, and you can get that information for maybe $5, $10, right? In, think about it. Uh, so I guess a few years ago, Bill Gates wrote, wrote this book about climate change. Now imagine this, he met countless scientists, right? He spent millions of dollars um, from his pocket to actually gather those information. And finally he wrote and compiled all of those information and wrote that book and, and it is, I guess, 200, 250 pages book. You can get that book for just $10 right imagine 20 years of his time millions of dollars imagine how much energy and effort he had put into that book but you can get that same information for just ten dollars in just maybe a few hours only so mm -hmm. it's a great possibility and and so book can really change life so you think about it like your story your message your ideas even if it can change one person's life it is worth it so go for it so first of all you need to really tackle your mental blocks that's why people don't take action that's why people always procrastinate these these are some hidden fears they have in their mind which is always stopping them to take their first action or to actually to start their book that's huge and I think you're so right because people are sitting with all of those fears and they end up becoming barriers that they can't break through. So now I know that one of the things that people need is the encouragement and the guidance and a system. So if they did reach out, let's say to your group for help, what are some of the things that they could get help with from best-selling book with us they don't need to worry about anything we'll take care of each and everything uh, from creating their book outline to finding a book writer or a ghostwriter who can interview them and write the book for them then completing their book right completing the manuscript and they would be proud of it and our speciality is We'll be writing, we'll actually write uh, the book in your authentic voice with your personality, right? So we have built that, we have built that system and we call it angel writing system, not ghost writing. It is angel writing. So uh, uh, then editing, proofreading, designing, formatting, ISP and publishing, distribution, marketing, getting sales, getting reviews, PR distribution. We guarantee that the book is going to become number one bestseller on Amazon. Otherwise, we refund three times the investment. So everything which you can imagine of about the book, which are essentials, we can take care of it, right? Um, if they come to us, we can also take care of audiobook, author website, Amazon ads, Facebook ads for the book, anything which you can imagine that can really um, transform the book idea and turn it into a best-selling book. So, but most of the people, I, I, I believe, so I guess a few people, half of the people maybe are looking for an expert or some kind of a professional company who can help them with the book. And maybe remaining half of them are actually uh, looking for just, just guidance or maybe they don't have the financial resources or they just want to write the book themselves. Uh, for them, I have an information which can really help them. Um, so I have seen one mistake people make is they, whenever they come with a book idea, they start with chapter number one, and and that's the actual the mis one of the mistake which people make due to which they always get confused and that they then they 
face obstacles and they just don't take action. So for an example, um, when you start with the chapter number one and maybe you get stuck, you don't know, you will not know exactly what to do next. That's why I always recommend people to create a book outline first. I, um, I have talked to maybe thousands of people uh, whenever, of course, uh, people have cried, people trying to write the book for several years. When I ask them, hey, can you please share me your book outline? They don't have the book outline. They just have a few chapters. Uh, but the problem is, uh, if you don't have the working book outline ready, you will always get stuck. For example, today, maybe you are not in the mood of writing uh, content about chapter number one. But if you have the book outline ready or the table of content ready, so you know that, for example, if you are not in the mood of cha writing chapter number one, maybe you can write about chapter number seven uh, at that day. So it is not stopping you in writing, right? You can, you always have that, right? Even professional writers have that writer's block, right? But writer's block is all about which content you are writing. So maybe at around one area you are stuck, but in another area you can be very creative and you can write several pages. So uh, having a book outline can actually speed up your book writing process. So this is one of my recommendation. And that's also we do for our clients as well. Whenever they start working with us, the first step which we do is create the book outline. But before that book outline, we also create the book outline quadrant. And this is very interesting, but if you have any questions, you can ask me and then we can talk about the outline quadrant. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think th those key tips of organizing your thoughts and being able to not necessarily go in a chronological order is, is so useful because our brains don't work like that <laughs> you know you just kind of have different ideas and sometimes like you said you just want to dig into that specific topic but it's mm -hmm. chapter five yeah. you know so that's that's really really good and so how long is the process for writing a, i mean i know your process when you did the book but when you have someone come to you what what's a typical timing with us we can turn a book idea into best-selling book for our clients in just six months wow and there are 30 different steps or 30 different services we deliver including book writing editing proofreading i think i mentioned all of these like formatting yeah. ispn um then designing book cover designing book trailer video pricing categories keywords then publishing and distribution then marketing book launch plan um, book launching, then getting sales reviews, PR distribution. They are total in total 30 different steps or services, and we can wrap it up. We can get it done in just six months. So yeah, this is the typical process we take. Usually, um, sometimes it, it is five months, sometimes it is seven months, but yeah, on average it is around six months. Yeah, I, that's really fast. You know, like <laughs> like I said, I think so. So many folks have talked about books and how long it takes. So that's a really fast process. Um, one of the questions I know that I've heard from people writing books when they're going through the process of publishing, because I know in the beginning you mentioned when you started doing research, you found self-publishing. How much time? And how do you help someone make a decision around if they want to self-publish or work with a publisher? Um, because I know for some people, they, they might feel compelled to have a publisher for whatever reason. And people should take this decision. People should actually make an informed decision about it, whether they should go with self-publishing, traditional publishing. Usually people think that traditional publishing, if they'll get a traditional publishing deal, they can they're going to be successful their book is going to be successful but that's not true when you go to a bookstore and when you start looking for a book you don't pick a book and first check the publisher who say okay who is the publisher you simply see the title subtitle the cover maybe read a few pages and if you like it then you just pick it up you just don't care about the publisher at all so mm -hmm. so first of all 
having a publishing deal from a traditional publishing company is not going to help you become successful in this uh, publishing space. First of all, you really need to understand it. The second is there, there are so many myths around uh, this choosing between self-publishing or traditional publishing. Let's cover a few of them. So the first, first myth is uh, people think that when they will get a traditional publishing deal, this traditional publishing company are going to take care of the marketing of the book or they will help you with the sales, but that's not true. They can maybe help you with the distribution, but when it comes to marketing, you have to do the marketing yourself, right? This is, this is a very important key. You need to understand it that usually traditional publishing company only chooses those people who have big followers, who really have people who can buy. So they are actually making money from your followers, right? So this is really interesting. Um, so this is one thing. They will not take care of marketing. You have to do the marketing yourself. Second is um, when you are going with traditional publishing, in most cases, in 99% cases, uh, you are losing the creative controls. It means that, for example, when your book is published after six months, maybe after getting some feedback from your customers, you decide that, oh, I, I really don't like the book cover. I need to change it. In most cases, you just can't change the book cover because you have to get an approval from traditional publishing company. Even if they say yes, it can take you months and months or maybe years to change the book cover. With self-publishing, it is just one hour thing. You have the book cover, updated book cover, you just upload it and it's done. Um, along with that, even when it comes to marketing, you, you can't make a lot of things. Uh, you have to always go back to traditional publishing publishers and ask them, hey, can I do this? Can I do that? Um, and that's where actually this can also harm and this can also uh, not going to get you more sales. Because, for example, if you want to uh, use the book, uh, maybe you, if you want to run Amazon ads, then you always, maybe you have to ask from publishing company that, hey, can I do that? So every time you have to do that, if you want to update the pricing, if you have to reduce the pricing, maybe for a week, it's very complicated. It's very, very difficult for people to do that. And it can take months, if sometimes years, to just change and update the pricing for a week. So these are a few things. Along with that, they... In most cases, they will be getting most of the royalties, right? For example, if uh, you're, you are getting a, a traditional publishing deal, they can get 50%, 60%, more, in most cases, 70 to 80% of the book, right? Means for every dollar, they are getting 70 cents um, in their bank, and you are just getting 30 cents. So there's one more thing which is really interesting and which people just don't know. Uh, for example, maybe you have heard that people getting traditional publishing uh, deals and they have got some big number. For example, they got a traditional publishing deal for $500,000 or maybe $1 million or maybe whatever amount is. Uh, this amount, you will not get it in advance, right? It is like once you start getting sales, uh, the publishing companies can use those money to pay it off. So it is not in advance. So again, so these are some myths around it, which is actually um, so. Still, if you think that traditional publishing company could be good fit you for you, uh, you sh you can really go for it. But you should always make an informed decision and always make sure that you read each and every sentence each and every word of your publishing contract because it could be anything so, uh, i have seen some of my clients for example the book is published in usa and they wanted to publish it in globally right but in in their publishing contract it was clearly mentioned that they can't take the book global for some reason i don't know and they are stuck they requested a lot from a publishing company and they are just not allowing. Actually, they got another publishing uh, deal or they they try to uh, self publishing the self publish uh, their book in other countries, but they are not allowing you to do that. So these are a few things which happens when you go with traditional publishers. 
but uh, the thing is they are really good with distribution if you really find a good um, traditional publisher then it can really help you with maybe your, your book can get on of airport or some really good bookstores so these are mm -hmm. also some good advantages of being uh, getting a traditional publishing deal uh, along with that there's one more benefit of uh, getting a traditional publishing deal is um, you can become new york Times bestseller with self-publishing you can't uh, so new york time uh, editors only chooses uh, traditional publishing uh, books right so if your book is self publishes uh, self published then you have no option no um, you you'll no, not get into the new york times bestseller list although you can become wall street journal bestseller or us today bestseller or amazon bestseller definitely we do that right we do amazon bestseller us today and wsj bestseller but we are still not able to do the new york times bestseller because we don't in most cases we don't work with uh, traditional publishing publishing um, authors so yeah again always yeah. make informed decision uh, whichever path you want to go for there are some pros and cons on both sides so choose your um choose your path correct like with having the right information yeah that's that's so huge i think due diligence is important and, and that's personal you know every every person is going to have their own opinion about whether they do want to become a New York Times bestseller or if they maybe they value autonomy more. Mm. Maybe you want all the creative control and you don't want to wait for any kind of change because it's just a headache <laughs> and yeah. there's too much too much um, administrative activities that have to happen, um, which I imagine can be frustrating, especially if it's your first book. Yes. Um, and then and maybe people make decisions because they decide maybe some people have like 10 books in mm. them and they 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 can choose differently right as mm. you gain more experience i know another question i had was around pricing and then profit so how do you how does somebody determine what the price of their book is and how much does someone actually make when mm. a sale happens so when it comes to pricing, there are two different factors involved. First of all, let's talk about the technical stuff and the royalty stuff. Um, so when you are publishing with Amazon, uh, let's talk about the Kindle version first. Uh, so there are two or three different versions of books which you can publish on Amazon. First is Kindle or ebook. Second is paperback. Third is hardcover. You can also publish audiobook via different platform like ACX, Audiobook Creation Exchange. But usually it is uh, Kindle paperback, right? In most cases. So for when it comes to Kindle, uh, you can't go lower than 99 cents, right? So this is a rule. You just can't go lower than 99 cents. If your book is uh, priced uh, between 99 cents to $2.99, then Amazon is gonna get, give you thirty five percent royalties of the book for every sale. If you get one dollar, then you will be getting thirty five cents, right? So, uh, but when your book is ranking, your Kindle book is ranking from two point nine nine dollars to nine point nine nine dollars, then you will be getting seventy percent royalties, and they will be getting thirty percent royalties. So. First of all, you need to understand this. Again, going beyond $9.99, you will be again getting 35% royalties. So clearly, Amazon wants you to price your book between $2.99 to $9.99. They're very smart. Uh, when it, uh, so this is actually the, so usually we recommend people go for $2.99 to $4.99 for the Kindle book. When it comes mm -hmm. to paperback, um, it depends on the production cost so when your book is uh, black and white have not a lot of images then usually i've seen that the production cost is around two dollars two three dollars right on average but if the book becomes more bulky more pages more images if it is also color if the, the the texture of the the color is also changed 
for example, their white option, white page option, cream page option, right? So they they also affects the difference. So um, depending on that, it can go higher, right? It can go up to five dollars, six dollars as well. So first of all, you have to check the production cost. If your production cost is around two, three dollars, and if you are publishing the book for uh, maybe fourteen nine ninety nine, fourteen dollars ninety nine cents, um, then then after removing the production cost, you will be getting around sixty percent royalties from on a paperback version. So. Mm -hmm. So yes, so this is actually the, the math. This is actually the technical things which you need to understand about the royalties. This for both Kindle and the paperback. Now, the second aspect is the, the actual marketing and really positioning the pricing. So the pricing is you just don't have to choose, pick one number and you just have to go for that. You always have to see exactly where the market is going. Uh, and the, the book actually can, be anything right so for example usually most of the books which we publish uh the kindle version we go for 2.99 and the paperback is 14.99 by default but we always go for the market research we always check uh how uh, we we find out top 50 books in the market like which are performing really well and we take uh, we we take the average of their pricing right and if usually if it is for example 9.99 for the kindle book then usually we go for that you won't believe it like i think uh, six months ago we published a book around aviation right so it was a very technical book uh, i guess in entire world and in, on entire planet maybe there could be only 5000 readers for those book right so it was a very niche book mm -hmm. the author specifically wanted to price this book very high you won't believe it the kindle book was priced for i guess 125 dollars <laughs> and um and i think the paperback was or yeah the paperback was maybe 225 dollars or something so and still people were buying for it it became bestseller you can find a review on our website as well so the thing is you need to understand that uh the pricing actually is a really key factor for him of course he was making less money right 35 percent royalties but he knew that if he will be pricing his book for 2.99 or 3.99 people in his niche or people is in his industry who are going to buy the book they will judge him that uh not that this is not a very premium person or premium brand or premium book right mm -hmm. so you really need to think about the market as well so of course you know these technical factors that how much royalties you will be getting but always check what your market wants what, what's your what your target readers can pay if you are for yeah. example if your target audience are students then always go for maybe 2.99 or maybe 99 cents as well because then you can get plenty of book yeah. sales but if you are uh um if your target audience are fortune 500 um ceos then maybe go for 99 9.99 dollars right go for at least the uh 9.9 dollars and you also will be getting the 70 percent royalties and right. so your book is uh, right, priced for the higher number so yeah these are the two factors which you have to keep in mind when it comes to pricing the book that's fa that's fascinating and i think it does help people to recognize some of that initial research so if you're uh, making a cooking book of recipes you know versus if you're in the self-help category yeah. or if you're a mystery you write mysteries or something i mean they're all different genres and you could get a pretty fast idea because I don't think there's anyone at this point that hasn't gone to Amazon mm. to try and find a book. <clears throat> I think that's one of the benefits today is that easy access to information that mm. didn't exist, you know, years ago. You could just type it, type by category and all of a sudden, you know, you have all this information at your fingertips. But, but it, it is interesting how it changes you know, just in those different brackets yeah. of all of a sudden you go past 999 and now it's a different 
scheme of how mm. you're getting the the royalties and the distribution. Um, but I but I think you know this kind of highlights why a company like yours is so important because this can feel very daunting for for someone to go through. Well, I'm just trying to get the stuff that's in my head on paper. Now I have to think about my book cover and the title. And I mean, all the, like you said, you have 30 services. So it's, it's, you know, a lot of times when we're making decisions, it's a question of time and money mm -hmm. because you either are going to spend more time or maybe you make a little bit more an in investment, but then you save time. So there's always a trade-off. So I do think that one of the big things is probably taking the time to look at what your budget is, what you're willing to spend and, and all of that. Because if you were to work with you and take six months, or if you did it on your own, <laughs> if you're willing to wait longer possibly because you're taking all these steps independently, you know, and then it, it could take who knows how long. Yes, so that's, right. that's an important thing, you know, to think about. Oh, okay. Well, before we part, um, because that's really good information. And if people have more questions, I definitely encourage you to go to bestsellerbook.com to find out more information. And I'm going to make sure to put that in the show notes so people can just access that because that'll be the first place you go. And then there's also a link to different social medias on there, right? If they want to follow in other ways. Right. And okay. I have one more uh, resource for your audience, and I think that could be really useful. Um, I think when we started this podcast or this episode, you mentioned that most of the people, they always don't know that where to start, right? They have yes. so many things in their head, but they don't know which one is going to be the first step and all of these things, right? Um, to really overcome this um, problem, I have created a one page checklist right um, that has all the steps and sub steps which can help you turn a book idea into a bestseller and this is a proper uh, this comes with a logical sequence that okay first of all you have to do this then this 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 so this is going to make sure that you will not get lost right so I can offer this uh, resource to your audience. So if they will go to bestsellingbook.com slash checklist, they can download it. They can print it out and paste it on their wall where they will be writing, publishing the book. It's going to make the entire journey very smooth uh, because they will also, with along with this checklist, they will also be getting a blueprint uh, which explains how to use the checklist, right? Each and every step, they will be explaining it in detail. So I just wanted to offer this to your audience. I think that could be helpful. Are you kidding? <laughs> That's so helpful. <laughs> I think one of one of the things that I, I know I appreciate, I certainly did in college and, and everything is just that, give me the outline help me with the structure, you know? And, and that's oftentimes enough at least to jumpstart the process. You know, mm. there could be some steps you get to that take longer, but at least having a path, having a roadmap is encouragement yeah. that there's not an excuse that you don't at least know the steps, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's amazing. I'll actually put that link in the awesome. show notes too because everybody is going to want to be able to get that checklist because I know you and I, before we started recording, you mentioned that in the COVID period of the pandemic, you've seen a spike in the number of people mm -hmm. that have wanted to write a book. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, and we were very um, intrigued because it because of that. We thought that uh, due to COVID, our business is going to go down um, and there are going to be so many people holding the money. Of course, it happened, right? Uh, people came on the call. There were a lot of people, I think, every day there were 20, 25 people uh, coming on a call at one point. So, but the thing is, most of the people, they were, of course, also holding their money. So we it helped us to actually think about the service we we launched some new packages 
right some more affordable packages we also launched this package where they can actually write and publish short books with us right just 50 pages book it just takes us four months and it's also um with very discounted rate so and now uh, i guess 50 percent of people they are going for the short books right so we, because of the covid like we discovered a new package and it is working really good for us so awesome. yep i love that when you it's more efficient hey if you could get your information out there in 50 pages mm -hmm. why not <laughs> so that's great that there's there's another option um but vic i have a couple of quick questions before we part that just sure. help people to get to know you better so the first question is in honor of the title of my podcast about being unbreakable is what makes you unbreakable my wife uh, she is my biggest support. Uh, so remember, I told you that I was able to write my book in 21 days. Yeah. So back then, she was my uh, girlfriend, and uh, she was um, university topper. She was really great at English. She helped. She proofed the book, right? And she was able to complete the book. Uh, so I was able to write the manuscript. It was very poorly written, and she fixed. <laughs> everything in the book and then i was able to upload it and i was able to publish it uh she was the only one who supported me when i dropped out of the college she was my biggest uh support she was she's still with me um we married three uh, years ago uh and uh last month she delivered a baby it's a baby boy and yeah so it's a really lovely time but yeah she is my biggest support and she makes me uh, go unbreakable Oh my gosh. Congratulations. That's, 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 that's probably the best answer that I've ever heard. That's amazing. That's awesome. Okay. What is one of the things that's on your bucket list? Mm. So, uh, one of the thing when it, let's talk about both of these things, uh, the professional and personal. Uh, so professionally, um, currently we have, we offer Amazon bestseller, USA Today bestseller, Wall Street Journal bestseller. We are also making some systems so that we can also um, introduce this service called New York Times bestseller to our clients. It is very difficult, very complicated, but we are still figuring it out. I hope maybe within a few years we'll be able to launch that service as well. So uh, that would be my uh, one of my goals in my bucket list if professionally. When it comes to um, a personal goal, um uh, yeah so i uh, in covid actually we made a, a plan i like i had also tickets i had all of these things like we were going to europe tour for uh, one month but due to covid uh, all of our flights got cancelled and we were not able to go so now of course as um, everything is back to normal so i think uh, i'm going to take my wife and also my son uh, my newborn uh, to europe very, very soon. Oh, that's amazing. I love both of those. I love both of those. Those are great. What about a self limiting belief? What's something that was a self limiting belief that you had to overcome? Uh, for me, I thought, I think I thought that uh, to they, of course, I guess so many um, self-limiting beliefs I had, but in the process, of course, I was able to overcome most of them. Um, so one of the things could be um, when I initially dropped out of the college, I thought I'm not not going to be able to make it because I was just 18, 19 year old. And uh, in my first month, I was able to hire some employees. Most of them, they were in 30s in their 40s right and i was able to manage it manage them but then when i my, when my first business failed um this self-limiting belief became more stronger that hey this is not you can't do it right you are mm -hmm. just very young and uh, you'll not be able to make it but somehow i just kept going and when i started seeing some action uh, some some results then i was able to um it was a very no, very gradual process. It just didn't happen overnight. But now I can see that it is almost gone. 
I can't see it. Yeah. That I know that anything which I can dream of or think of, I think I can do it. I can achieve it. I believe that. All right. Two final questions. The next one is, what is one of your superpowers? Something that you're really good at, that you're proud of? I'm really good at systems. I'm really good at creating our, our processes. So um, somehow I'm able to make very complex things go very simple, right? Uh, I've seen that for the other people, they see things, they, they see it very, very complex. I can make it in a very simplified way. Uh, when I entered the publishing space, I subscribed to some courses to launch my first book. Um, and they were, of course, um, sharing those information, but it was very chaos. I, I was not able to get it. But now I have made it extremely simple or extremely simplified for everyone. So that's why I created this one page checklist, right? So you don't have to go through the entire course or everything. Everything you can see, the entire publishing journey, you can see it in just one page. So not only the publishing space, even in my business, uh, I'm very much system oriented, like anything you, which you can imagine of, even hiring people, managing people, running social medias, um, or helping our clients, everything's properly system oriented. We have systems and process and documentation for everything which you can imagine. So, um, so yeah, I think I'm proud of this superpower. Yeah, oh, it's, it's helping a ton, <laughs> obviously with your business. Vic, if you had one last piece of advice to give to anyone who's listening, what would that be? One life, make it count. It's beautiful. Well, I appreciate you so much and I appreciate your time. I know how busy you are running a business. So thank you again for sharing all this incredible information today on the show. Thank you, Des. Uh, it was really lovely talking to you. You have great persona great energy uh, the questions which you asked they were really different uh, usually when i get on podcast usually people ask me same and same questions but your questions were different so thank you so much for your time thank you so much for having me i had a great time talking to you awesome, awesome. thank you so much vic i hope that you learned so much about book writing and the process i know i certainly did invaluable that checklist is such a bonus and i do want to just acknowledge and have this moment my nerd moment of books are so powerful i have a huge stack of books behind me because i need to get a new bookshelf so i can organize them all but they are so powerful uh, I am a huge fan of audiobooks, so most of the books that I get today are on Audible. I do, uh, especially from podcast guests, get wonderful physical copy books, um, and it's it's magical. I, I highly encourage people to embrace learning. And if you're a person that struggles with flipping through actual pages, they're are audiobooks that make listening and getting information so much easier today than ever before. And if, I don't know if I've said this on a previous episode, if you are an Amex Platinum card holder, there is $240 worth of credit that you can get for services, uh, streaming, type services and Audible is one of them. So while there is a fee to uh, be able to get that card, there are quite a few benefits and that's one of them. So just saying, Audible and Amazon and Jeff Bezos didn't pay me to say that, although maybe I should reach out and get that kind of royalty, speaking of royalties today. Um, but here's the cool thing, it's easier than ever before to get your story and your word out there to the world. People like Vic's company make it easy for you to do that. There's a story, like he said, that is within each of us. And if you are so compelled to share your story and leave a legacy, it's something to consider. 
You can self-publish and get your content out on Amazon quickly and people can find it and read it or listen to it, which is so incredible. So something to think about. Uh, obviously, there are many places that you can go for help. Uh, Vic is one of those sources. I love his story. I love the fact that he's continued to shape his services. And in the future, he will be helping people who do want to be a New York Times bestseller if they want to go the traditional publishing route. So there's a lot of different options. I hope you got something. I just love all this information today. Remember that you are your only limit. So take action today, especially if it's on this topic. <laughs> so tune in again next time for another inspiring episode of the Born Unbreakable podcast. And don't forget, if you haven't already, to follow or subscribe and rate and review this episode. Thanks for listening.